Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about the annual training plan as well as macro cycles, and we're gonna also go over an example at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and start off by analyzing this example and telling you some things you need to know about the annual training plan. So in this example, we have an annual training plan, which would be a full year, broken down with two macro cycles, a track and field season and a football season. So typically, our macro cycle lasts one season, and if we're doing multiple seasons in a year, we would have multiple macro cycles in an annual training plan. If we're just a one sport athlete or we're just doing one season per year, in that case, you would have a macro cycle that lasts the full annual training plan. Importantly, when we're thinking about this, this graph is just a representation of this chart. So these are basically the same things, and we're gonna break them down now. All right, so what we're gonna see here is that we have different training periods, training phases, and training seasons. And if you're studying for the CSCS exam, they could be asking you questions on each of these. So you have to understand what prep period versus GPP phase versus off season means. And basically, all three of those are gonna be occurring at the same time. So for our American football player in the early summer who's just doing general training, you could say that from a training period perspective, he's in the preparatory period. You could also say that he's in the GPP phase of training, or you could say that he's in the off season. And no matter what you say in terms of terminology, we're gonna be thinking about the same things from a program design perspective. Generally speaking, we're gonna be doing higher volume training. So we're gonna be doing, for example, three sets of 12 lunges, four sets of 10 push-ups. We might be doing three sets of 15 inverted rows or four sets of 40 yards of a sled push. This is just all general training exercises, high volume, relatively low intensity, and it all fits in that off season slash GPP slash preparatory period. Importantly, there are a lot of options from a program design perspective, but as long as we're fitting the general trend of higher volume, lower intensity, we're meeting the goals of this phase or block of training. As we work into the SPP phase, this would be the end of the preparatory period. The SPP is a specific preparatory phase, whereas over here the GPP was a general preparatory phase. So in this specific preparatory phase, we're gonna start to see the introduction of more sport-specific movement patterns. So for example, we could be doing 10 seconds of a hill sprint, and that sprinting for a short period of time up an incline, very powerful. It replicates the demands of the acceleration phase of a start of a football play. It's also relatively short, maybe slightly longer than a football play with 10 seconds, but we're training a similar energy system as well. Some other things that you might see in the SPP phase or the preseason would be power cleans or med ball throws. We might be doing these for six sets of two or four sets of four, but generally we're programming, again, based on the needs of slightly less volume and slightly more intensity. And again, I wanna emphasize this graph could be kinda of overlaid on top of here. I'm not doing that because it would confuse you even more, but this trend is what we're showing here with these blocks on this side. So we're doing the same linear periodization type trend on this phase of training, this macro cycle, as we are on this macro cycle. We're just showing it in two different ways. And then lastly, as we move into the competition period or the pre-competition and main competition phase, or you could say in season, we're gonna be doing lower volume training, a lot of one set, two sets, uh, maybe sets of squats, bench, depth jump. Um, we could still be doing sport specific movements here, but we're again at lower volume and higher intensity here. So hopefully this is starting to help you make the connections between the goals of the annual training plan and these big picture graphs that you're seeing and the actual program design considerations. In the transition period, which we would move to next, we're gonna be doing active rest. So this block of training is gonna involve just non-sport specific training. We might be doing swimming or yoga or basketball or just some general activity to stay active but not necessarily train the same patterns. And actually we're specifically trying not to do the same type of training because having this transition period is gonna prevent overuse injuries from a physical and a psychological perspective and help the athlete make long-term progress. So if you were thinking about which phase of training is important for maintaining or reducing the risk of overtraining, that transition period becomes very important. And often this is labeled T2 because we're transitioning out of the season, whereas there's actually a small transition period as we transition into the season as well. It's kind of tucked in here. But really T2 is the one where we're doing active rest. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about track and field here. And we have some examples here as well. 
the same structure of training is going on here. We're doing linear periodization where we're generally decreasing our volume and generally increasing our intensity. It's not actually linear where every week we're decreasing volume. We may have blocks of training where our volume stays the same or even increases, but as we zoom out and look over the course of six months of training or four months of training, our trend follows this line of generally decreasing volume, generally increasing our intensity. The way that might look from the perspective of a track and field athlete is that in the off season or the very early period of training here, so this part of the graph is equivalent to the preparatory period or the GPP phase. In that period, we might be doing five sets of 10 leg press, three sets of 12 bench press, three by 600 meter run. This is training that would be considered base training for a sprinter. They're, they're going to be doing base that's a little bit longer than the distance that they're competing in. So maybe repeats of a 600 meter run would make sense here early in the training. And they're also going to be doing generally hypertrophy and strength work and maybe even strength endurance work where they're doing those higher volume sets. And you may see just conditioning as well. So things like repeated step ups or, or weighted vest lunges or stuff like that. As we move towards the season, we're gonna get more sports specific, a little bit more intensity. So we may, for example, see four sets of eight of a front squat. And in this phase of training, four sets of eight of a front squat is gonna be less volume than we were doing over here. And it's gonna be a little bit maybe more sports specific. And then as we get towards competition here, so, so this phase of training kind of lines up with that competition phase where our intensity is getting really high our volume of strength training is getting low and our volume of sport specific training like run intervals and stuff is actually getting higher. So we might see 50 to 200 meter sprint repeats and hopefully they're conditioned our, our track and field athlete is conditioned well enough from the early phases of training to actually tolerate and recover from multiple bouts of 50 to 200 meter sprints. And maybe we're seeing things like broad jumps as well. And this isn't a comprehensive program. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of exercises that you can consider here, but hopefully this is making the connection with the trends that we wanna see. All right, now let's look at how this looks on Excel from a perspective of a basketball player. And I do wanna give credit to Trevor Boyd. He actually wrote this program as an assignment in a strength conditioning program writing mentorship that I did previously. And it's really good and it shows the demands that a college basketball player is going to see. And I do want to mention, if you are interested in learning how to write a strength conditioning program, make sure you go ahead and follow the movement system on Instagram because I do have something coming out for that. All right, so let's take a look at this program here. And what you can see is April, May, and June are off season. Depending on the college basketball program, these athletes may be doing some form of conditioning in the off season, or maybe they're out of town and just following a program. As we get to July, August, and September, we start to see more structured off-season lifting. From a program design perspective, you're probably gonna see more of that hypertrophy and general preparedness training here. The reason that we're doing this general preparedness training is so that we can get the athlete accommodated to a higher volume of training that they can recover from and they're conditioned for, so that way when we introduce the sport-specific training demands and the competition demands of basketball, they don't run into injuries and overuse. As we get to October, November, we start to see what's called intensification. And this is just a way of saying that we're increasing our intensity and we're tapering off our volume. The athletes are accommodated to higher volume training now, so we can actually taper that volume down, increase our intensity, and meet some more sport-specific needs. As the season starts in December, we have different phases of in-season training with different blocks. We're probably gonna see more strength slash power blocks in season. Ideally, this is the time period where we're actually realizing all of the strength and power gains that we were accumulating throughout the off season and preseason. So this phase of training is gonna incorporate a combination of maintenance and peaking blocks to realize the strength and power gains. There are a lot of ways to structure a macro cycle, whether you write it out on Excel like this or just kind of keep it general on paper, but I think it's good to have this annual training plan or macro cycles laid out so that way when we come to writing an individual program, we have an idea of where we should be. Should we be at high volume, moderate volume, low volume? Should we be progressing intensity or should we be progressing our volume? What types of exercises are we picking? And by having this annual plan or macro cycle laid out, we can have those decisions already made. All right guys, hopefully seeing this was really helpful for you. If you are interested in learning more about writing a strength and conditioning program, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at The Movement System, as well as joining the Strength Conditioning Study Group. If you want a free program download like this, where you can actually start practicing writing individual sets and reps 
and deciding on percentages or RPEs and practicing this stuff, go ahead and click the link in the description below to download this free template. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one.